In mid-June, the Ukrainian general staff methodically listed S-300, S-350 and S-400. Dozens of launchers of these systems were destroyed, along with more than 15 radar stations and over 10 command points. All this is Russian air defense, and only in Russian-occupied Crimea. How did the Ukrainians manage this? And what are they preparing for by focusing specifically on these targets? Crimea is one of Putin's main trophies. But recently it has turned into a problem. The once formidable Black Sea Fleet has already lost over a third of its ships. Military airfields regularly suffer from a deadly combination of aerial drones and Western long-range missiles. According to British intelligence, Russians will be forced to disperse their aviation to protect it from new strikes. But why have the Ukrainians recently concentrated on somewhat different targets? Belbek, Sevastopol, Chornomorske, Yevpatoria, Jankoy, Tarhankut, Saki, Donske, Mysove, Alushta, Mount Aipetri. This is not a travel route through the occupied Crimea. At least not yet. This is a list of places in Crimea where Ukrainian forces have successfully destroyed air defense systems in the last month and a half. Additionally, Ukrainian forces also disabled four Russian S-300 systems in the Belgorod region using HIMARS. Ukrainian successes in Crimea have become possible in particular thanks to the finally coordinated supply of American ATACMS missiles, able to reach any target on the peninsula. Combined with drones and other missiles, they systematically pierce the Russian defenses, striking the very air defense systems designed to intercept these missiles. Why do Ukrainians need clean skies over Crimea so much? Well, you have probably heard this name more than once. The F-16. The Institute for the Study of War explained that Ukrainian forces are purposely weakening Russia's air defense capabilities ahead of receiving these fighters. Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway have pledged to provide Ukraine with around 80 F-16s. The commander of the Dutch Air Force, General Arnaud Stallman, stated that they would go on their first combat missions this summer. The country's defense minister, Kaisa Ollengren, added that Ukraine will be allowed to use its F-16 fighters for attacks on targets on Russian territory. So what does this mean? Ukrainians are systematically destroying enemy aviation and particularly enemy air defenses wherever they can reach, primarily in Crimea. Soon Ukraine will receive its first F-16s along with trained pilots and technical personnel. And then Russian SUs and MiGs will face American fighters in the air. The very ones that can do much more than the outdated Soviet aircraft Ukraine has desperately tried to protect its skies with. Russians understand this plan too. They are pulling new and new air defense systems into Crimea. Additionally, according to British intelligence, Russian long-range aviation has already shifted the focus of its cruise missile strikes to Ukrainian air bases. All to protect the peninsula and other territories from future F-16 attacks. So far, they are doing poorly. The war in Ukraine is entering a new phase, which could be decisive for occupied Crimea and for the entire course of the war.